Looter is a free-to-play, third-person extraction looter shooter. The core gameplay loop finds players going into encounters to gather resources while attempting to avoid dying to other players. The gameplay sports greater difficulty than many other free-to-play games, with fast time to kill and insta-kill headshots. Originally released in 2019 as an Xbox exclusive, this title has since been released on Switch, PlayStation, and the focus of this video, PC via Steam. I've been a player of this title since its original Xbox release, and I hope over the course of this video to provide insight into this new Steam title by Bohemia Interactive, the devs who also made Arma and DayZ, and help you understand if this title is worth your time, as well as for the veteran players of the game, uh, to understand what it might entail for the future of Vigor with such a massive decision. So hopefully all my experience can help provide some of this insight. With no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> So to understand if Vigor is the game for you, there are several details we should go over to help you get a grasp of what this title is like. First, I intend on covering the gameplay loop. Then I will cover the competition to Vigor and what it does differently from those titles, followed by an explanation of Vigor's community dynamics, then moving on to its monetization models and the issues it poses. Hopefully these details can help you make an informed decision about if this title is worth your time or something you would be interested in. So let's start out with the gameplay loop. As I mentioned in the preface, Vigor's core gameplay loop is going into encounters, gathering resources, fighting other players, and trying to extract these resources to use in future encounters. Some of these resources are going to be building supplies, used for upgrading your base. Base upgrades are permanent buffs that stand as the core progression system, granting you uh, upgrades that can help generate resources in your base, the ability to craft more weaponry, or a supply called materials. Materials are used to craft ammo, heals, tools, and guns, making them a vital supply source, creating a kind of pressure of sorts for one to upgrade their base to produce more materials to have even better supplies. On the note of these supplies, Vigor uses a risk-reward system. Essentially, every bit of supplies you bring into an encounter will be lost in the case that you die. However, bringing more supplies increases your chance of not dying, creating a dynamic where you have to weigh your options before choosing a loadout. This risk will slowly decrease as you progress and build greater stockpiles of weaponry and other supplies, until in late game you can deploy with whatever you want. That is the core gameplay loop of Vigor explained relatively quickly, but let's get into some of the competition the game faces and how those games differ from Vigor. Because if you're somebody going into the extraction shooter market and wants to know exactly the differences that Vigo does from everyone else, then we should kind of get into the exacts of those details. Vigo faces a large array of competition on the PC market. The looter shooter market is certainly saturated these days with titles, but the two main ones that come to mind for me are Escape for Tarkov from Tarkov and Hunt Showdown. Escape from Tarkov is a great point of reference for Vigor, uh, specifically because when Vigor first came out, it was stated by many to be the EFT for console. Uh, well, free EFT for console. So now that it's out on PC, the reverse comparison becomes very relevant. However, these two titles do quite a bit very differently. First, Vigor is far more simplified than EFT is, lacking complex armor ratings, alternative ammo types, and the features that both games do share, like penetration levels, quests, and crafting, are far more simplified and basic in Vigor, allowing it to be more approachable to newer players and casual players. Vigor also lacks the wipes that define in large part the play cycles of Tarkov, as once you have a large amount of loot in Vigor, that loot will never reset or go anywhere. Overall, these changes make Vigor with a more casual alternative to EFT, when you load in and relax, at least in comparison to some of the far more grindy, you know, nature that you see in EFT. For some individuals, this may miss the entire point of the extraction shooter genre, or the entire reason you play EFT. But for others, this change lets the genre actually be approachable for those of us with a life outside of gaming. The other comparison I brought up was Hunt Showdown. This comparison is, in some regards, completely off base and not correct at all. But in other regards, it is apt. Um, Hunt favors a slow, deliberate gameplay due to a slower rate of fire weapons, while Vigo supports a more active playstyle due to having things like MGs and bombs and grenades. But they are both looter shooters, and I think comparing the differences in how they handle progression, at least, is an apt comparison. The progression of Hunt Showdown is based off leveling up from XP you gain in encounters. As you play, you gain more XP and more currency, allowing you to purchase better weapons, which, in turn, lowers the risk of bringing in more expensive loads. In this way, Vigo is very similar, replacing XP with building materials and currency with materials. 
However, they differ in some key ways. First, when you, you play Hunt, you uh, essentially are close to guaranteed at least some progression from each round. Even if you die, XP is XP, and you will still move forward. This is not the case in Vigo, as death simply wipes out everything you gained, bar materials. Second, Hunt's progression is based off a single gauge, this being XP. XP is something you get from doing anything in Hunt Showdown. You kill an enemy, you loot something, you extract with the boss token, and you get XP. This, again, is not the case in Vigo, as each upgrade to the base will require different supplies and different materials to complete. Meaning, even if you go into an encounter, loot, survive, and extract, and kill every other player, there is a non-zero chance you may end up with none of the supplies you actually needed to progress in the game. Fido does have a battle pass system, which kind of addresses some of these issues. But that kind of sidesteps the issue, is because the battle pass is a monetized part of content, and also isn't part of the core progression system. I will address the battle pass more when I get to the monetization side of this video, and really give more details on that. But for now, just know that it doesn't exactly address the issues I just brought up. Overall, Vigo is far less forgiving than Hunt Showdown is in progression. Again, though, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you like grindy games that are just going to be available for you to play hundreds of hours into, Vigo is quite grindy, and it's there for that reason. If you don't like that, then please do keep that in mind before installing this title. From comparison of other games, we should now move on to understanding the community around this game, Vigo. With many games I've played, it's been the community that's kept me interested for so long, and particularly with games with multiplayer, the status of the community is quite important. Vigo's community, though, is unique. Not necessarily for good reasons or bad, but to understand the community, I think it would be best if I broke it into two sections. First, the average player base, this being the normal guy or gal who's just playing the game. And second, the partners. These are the content creators who have in some way, connection to the devs, and serve as not just as a source of the information for the community, but also as the community's ability to communicate with the dev team. The average player base of Vigo is dominated by casual gamers, who, based off community data, are middle-aged men, mostly from North America. Most of these players are extremely casual, getting on only for a few matches a day after work before getting off to do something else. This nature has made it so some of the more competitive aspects of the community do not tend to attract large amounts of attention, as most players just play the game casually. In fact, if you were to ask around Vigo, I doubt many players could tell you who the top players are in any given part of the game, or really even care in that regard. This casual nature, though, does have an interesting side effect of making people usually stick to whatever is perceived as meta, seemingly wanting to get the most of the limited rounds they play. Vigo suffers from a large history, and long history, of swarms of users massively using whatever weapon is perceived as best at the moment, as well as whatever strategies are stated to be the best. This is exemplified by the fact that throughout Vigo's history there have been often times where one weapon has large amounts of uh, priority over others, and this odd relationship kind of creates a weird situation where it is paradoxical that you have casual players using try-hard tactics, but I think that's just due to the very nature of Vigo as a game with fast TTK and a high-risk nature, which forces even players who only play a slight amount of the game to adopt more competitive playstyles to have fun at all. This dynamic is in part greatly influenced by the other group of players I briefly mentioned, these being the partners. Partnership is a system where the top vigor streamers and YouTubers, these are not the top players, but streamers and content creators, are able to communicate directly to the devs, and in the process represent not just their viewer base, but crucially themselves. This relationship has created a unique result, to say the least. I'm not going to cover that in this video, because it would get us horribly off task and wouldn't really help you in understanding much about the game as a new player. Um, it's really more a situation to talk about for those of us who are already invested. But the TLDR is the prime method of communication between the devs and the player base occurs via a group that has a vested interest in their own playstyle remaining viable, which often creates further reinforcement of metas, making the aforementioned dynamic even sharper. This has a another side effect, and the reason I'm bringing it up when talking about the community is it often means that one of our prime sources of information when regarding information from the devs or information about the game has a horrible hint of bias to it. This means it is very hard to get reliable, accurate information about anything going on in the game, and you're often just going to have to do it yourself. 
which can be extremely frustrating to those of us who really like stat crunching and really like tutorials and guides and that stuff. But if you don't care and you're just a casual gamer who wants to get on, that doesn't affect you at all. So we can move on from the community's entire existence to Vigor's monetization. In the great year of 2024, monetization has kind of become a very hot point of tension for a lot of gamers. And I say this not as a game journalist, but as one of y'all, it is extremely frustrating how much money they are trying to gather from every single player that they can get to touch their titles. And it has become increasingly pervasive in all sorts of titles. Vigor upon full release will be a free-to-play game. At present on Steam, it is released as a paid early access, however this will change in the coming months. Due to this, Vigor has to gain revenue in many alternative ways, and uh, many of these alternative ways are very pervasive. First, the aforementioned Battle Pass. This system is in part the actual core progression system for most players. As I mentioned pre prior, the uh, core progression system that is in place for the upgrades is deeply flawed. So, due to that, on top, there's also an aspect on top of that. Uh, the shelter upgrades have received almost no updates since 2019. They've received a little bit, but nothing major, uh, which essentially means for console players, it has been long since completed and forgotten about, leaving the Battle Pass as the only source of progression. The Battle Pass works like any Battle Pass does, having very minimal content in its free tier, but having tons of cosmetics, weapons, and items in its paint tier. If you caught me saying weapons there, that was not a mistake. Vigor's paid battle pass does offer gameplay advantages, ranging from early access to newer weapons, piles of weaponry and ammunition, or early access to tools. The crafting recipes for new weapons and tools, for example, are only available in the battle pass during the update by which they release, with them sometimes taking months after the update to be obtainable via other means. This isn't Vigor's only intrusive monetization, as Vigo offers paid insurance, which allows players to skip the risk side of the risk reward letting them keep all of their gear in the occasion that they die. It also offers paid buffs that do, to give a little bit of a benefit of the doubt here, offer the entire lobby loot rewards or lobby airdrop rewards, but it is a paid system that directly buffs your things. On the note of the airdrop I just mentioned, the airdrop is a special piece of loot that offers the greatest possible rewards in a possible match, like crafting recipes, with some crafting recipes and loot only being obtainable by getting the top level crates which again, are only available if you or someone else pays money to boost. Vigor's dynamic with monetization has been an issue for many players over its entire history. However, again, if you're a casual player who just wants to get on and play a couple rounds, and you don't entirely care about spending any money on any new content, you just want to play the game, then this isn't an issue for you. If you do not intend on, on dropping piles of money or getting the newest content, and you're just fine jumping on a game and playing a couple of rounds, none of this affects you. And, and Vigo's monetization can be something you can entirely ignore, as it is a free-to-play game. I hope this video really helps you understand what exactly this game is, what exactly you're getting into. I, I tried to keep it as far from the average YouTube video that just sugarcoats the game, as if it's perfect, or spends 20 minutes trashing it. Nobody wants to sit down and just hear, this game's awful. I wanted to portray Vigo in as honest a way as I could, and tell you what's actually going on here. If you think Vigor sounds great and you want to jump down and play the game, go ahead. If you want to avoid it after what I've told you, fine by me. The The point is, I don't want you listening to my video and then jumping on the game and being like, this is not what was described at all. That would just mean you have wasted 13 minutes of your life. I've played this game for almost five years, and at one point I, I rather enjoyed the title. So maybe some of you will give it a try and find some enjoyment out of it too. But for now, that is all. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.